I'm taking this very, very serious because I have taken a lot of what happened last time round personal. Retribution, man, that's what I want. I'm taking this very serious. And if they aim, they're in for a nasty shot. Who will be ready to put it all on the line? as the teams are ready to fight for the Blood Brothers Cup. And the games are about to begin. Hello boys and girls and welcome to my preview of Arsenal against Wolves this weekend back in Premier League action after the Carabao Cup antics the other night at Anfield, 5-5. Five, five. I don't think we're going to see that in the Premier League. And um, it's an Arsenal fan's luck that they can go all the way to Liverpool, watch their team score nine goals and still lose. Typical. Um, but listen, you know what? This is not going to be an easy game. I don't think Wolves are the same side that they were last year. Um, they've only lost two times out of their 10 games in the Premier League. They have drawn six of those games and they've only won two. But let's remember, one of those two victories was away to Manchester City. And I don't know what it is about Wolves, but whenever they play against a side that are in the top six, they seem to turn up. They seem to struggle when they play teams lower down the table. But against the top six, like I said, they seem to just come alive and they seem to play really well and they will cause problems. Last season at the Emirates, um, they should have won the game, to be quite honest with you. They were a very, very good side. And then, of course, when we went to Molyneux, they battered us. And um, even though this is at the Emirates, we can't take it for granted. Not with the way that we're playing at the moment. Not with the in-house problems. You look at the last result. 2-2 against Crystal Palace. Perfect start. 2-0 up. Nine minutes. You're thinking, here we go. And it finishes 2-2. And the other thing that I'm not looking forward to this weekend is the reintroduction of VAR. Because, of course, it's not used in the Carabao Cup. So it was so nice to actually celebrate goals without worrying as to whether they're going to get chalked off or not. But um, like I said, with Arsenal, what is Unai Emery going to do? There's clear problems right now. Um, there's clear dressing room unrest. And they're either going to come out and answer it all guns blazing, or they're just going to carry on and play the way that they have been, which is not great. Defensively, up at Liverpool... Shocking. We will have a completely different defensive line, in my opinion, for this game. But it doesn't matter. We still have problems, whatever players we play in defence. It's the attack where we're normally strong, but lately it's not strong because our play is slow, laborious and boring. Um, so team selection is going to have to be key. And um, with that said, I'm going to go and get into the starting lineup, and I'm going to go with what I would like to see. Starting off in goal, Bern Leno. Now, um, I've seen a lot of criticism of him lately. Some, you know, questioning his kicking. Um, it's one of the main things. But when you look at Emi Martinez's performance at Liverpool, you can see why Bern Leno is not really under that much pressure. For as good as Emi Martinez has been in some games, he's got to take a look at himself for some of them goals at Anfield. But um, no questions, no problems. Bern Leno is in goal for this one. In defence, um, starting off on the right-hand side, um, I'm going to go with Hector Bellerin. Um, played 90 minutes at Anfield. I felt he struggled to begin with, but then he grew into the game. And I feel that now he should be playing. And um, I would actually go for this one and play him here. Maybe you and I won't, and he'll look at the Vittoria game in midweek. But I'm going with what I want to see, and I'm going to go with Hector Bellerin. Um, on the left-hand side, I'm going to go with Kieran Tierney. And I think it's pretty clear now that he is going to be the left-back when it comes to the Premier League. Um, Kalazanak also picked up a knock at Anfield and Tierney actually had to come on for the last 10 minutes. But no questions, no problems, Kieran Tierney. Um, in the centre of defence, first of all, Socrates. And I think that he played well last week against Crystal Palace. Wasn't his fault. Should have had two goals, to be honest. Um, the one that was chalked out that shouldn't have been. 
Um, but yeah, the thing with Socrates is the inconsistency. One week he can have a good game like he did at Palace and then he could have a poor one like he might against Wolves. So uh, be interesting to see what he does, but I'm going to go with Socrates. Um, alongside him, David Luiz. And again, um, didn't really put a foot wrong against Crystal Palace. Wasn't his fault uh, for what happened and the two goals that they got back. Uh, thought he had a decent enough game. And again, he's another one that's kind of hit and miss. Has a good game, bad game. We need to get some consistency now. Um, but yeah, David Luiz at centre-back. Uh, Going to move into the midfield area. And of course, this is where I feel things start to get very, very interesting. Granite Xhaka. Um, I wouldn't have him in the squad anyway. I think he still needs to be kept out for a while. And Unai Emery has actually came out in a press conference and said that Granite Xhaka will not be available for this game. Um, so for me, it makes things a little bit easier. First of all, Lucas Torreira. Play him in his natural role. Look at him up at Anfield the other night. So much better. I don't know what you're seeing that we don't. Honestly, play Lucas Torreira there. Um, alongside him, we're going to go with Guendouzi. And I feel that he's been one of the standout performers this season. And um, I really like the look of the torreira Guendouzi um, pivot. And I think they complement each other perfectly. You've got the likes of Torreira who will sit and break up the play. And Guendouzi who will uh, be very energetic, very in your face. Um, and also break those lines to link the play uh, with the attacking areas. Um, Going to move into the three in front of those two. First of all, on the right-hand side, Nicolas Pepe um, was on the bench at Anfield, didn't get on. Um, and I have no problems with his performances of late. I don't think that he was too bad against Crystal Palace. His delivery was superb. Um, I don't think he played badly against Sheffield United. I think we're starting to slowly see signs of what Nicolas Pepe can do. But games like this is where he's going to have to step up and start justifying that price tag. And um, yeah, no questions we're putting in there though. Um, on the left of that three, I'm going to go with Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Completely rested, not even on the bench at Anfield. And he still needs just that one goal to complete 50 for Arsenal. Not getting a lot of service. Not had many chances of late. But he scores goals for fun. And he will get back on the score sheet very soon. And I hope he does it in this game. And he gets that 50th goal. Uh, Going to move to the middle of that three. And I'm bringing straight in Meza Ozil. He was brilliant at Anfield. Majestic. And you could sit there and say it was Liverpool's B team, C team and everything else. You still got to go out and perform. All right. You still had the likes of Keita in the middle of the park. And yet he was commanding. Oxley chamberlain was in there. It wasn't kids that were playing in the area that Meza Ozil was. And he was bossing it. Um, and listen, Unai Emery, you've got no choice, I don't think. I feel that you may have brought him back for the game at Liverpool because of the whole Shaka situation and you're trying to get fans on your side. And his performance warrants a start. Simple as that. If you took him off after 60 minutes and you're not starting him, why? You know, you start him in this game, it will then justify why you took him off because he hasn't played a lot of football. But for this game, Meza Ozil has to start. End of story. Up front as the main striker, Alexandre Lacazette. Um, again, on the bench, was about to come on at Anfield, um, but then was told to sit back down because Kalazinak got injured and we had to use Tierney as our last sub. Um, but yeah, he's gaining slowly uh, match fitness again. And um, he needs to get himself on the score sheet. And I feel that he will carry on from there. But um, no problems at all. And we will finally, in my book, get to see that attacking threat that we've all wanted to see. Which is Pepe, Ozil, Aubameyang, Laka. Simple. That's what I want to see. And I'm hoping Unai Emery does it. And he doesn't come up with some random bullshit team. With Torreira playing in a 10 and all sorts of madness. So... There we go. That is it. That is my preview. That is my predicted lineup. Um, let me know, as usual, in the comments section whether you agree or disagree. What do you think of that starting 11? Would you go with that? If not, what would you go with? Um, if you're new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you smash a like on this video. And I will be back after the game for a player ratings. Um, hopefully, I've still got my hat as well. Um, but yeah, listen... Um, it's over to the boys. They've got to go and put the performance in and they've got to go and get three points. So 
Until the next video, I'll see you lot soon. I'm out of here.